Live from KYMA Studios, this is News 11 Sunrise, your number one source for news in the desert southwest. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm joined today with Molly, Molly Lang. Lang. She is new to the News 11 team. Joey Norton has the morning off, and Madeline Hunt has moved over to KY, or I'm sorry, KSWT at the 4 o'clock show. So if you want to tune in to Madeline, go ahead and tune in there, and Joey will be back tomorrow. But I'm joined by our newest team member. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Tell me how you feel about being here in Yuma. Oh, I'm so excited, and I'm, you know, I'm from Phoenix, so I'm used to the weather and um, only a couple hours away from where I used to live, so it's not much to get acclimated to. Good, good, because the weather will be something that you will have to get acclimated to. Let's just go outside right now. The search continues this morning for a motive and suspect in last week's deadly assault on two Arizona priests. 28-year-old father Kenneth Walker was shot to death in the attack. 56-year-old father Joseph Tara was seriously injured in the assault that happened Thursday in the rector of the morning of Mission Catholic Church in Phoenix. On Sunday, church officials said that they expect, expect Father Tara to make a full recovery. Meantime, police have released a limited description of one of the silence, describing him only as a 40-year-old white male investigators. Haven't nailed down a possible motive for the attack. Rescue crews in Arizona had to help a Boy Scout troop and a hiking trio to include a 70-year-old man after they got stuck in a canyon. Erica Flores has the story. The 70-year-old has been identified as Ken Barnes of that canyon to safety. And this picture shows two of the rescued hikers walking behind a Yavapai sheriff deputy from the helicopter. Well, if it, haven't, if it hasn't happened already, it's likely your favorite airline is about to change one of your favorite perks, a change so drastic that travel experts suggest maybe you should drop them as your favorite. Our story from NBC's Chris Clackham. You're not In this Healthline 11 report, we've had clinical trials to treat Alzheimer's disease for years. Now scientists are hoping to prevent it. Barbara Moore Silva has more on this landmark study. 70-year-old... Coming up on Sunrise, we'll give you a sports update. Is it unrealistic for Team USA to win the World Cup? We'll have a preview of the team practicing in Brazil. And we're taking you outside where right now things are all clear, but by later on this afternoon, you may want to grab some sunscreen, water, and shade because we're going right into the triple digits. We'll have more. Stay with us. Well, next on Sunrise, more about the World Cup. It is in full swing, but how will the Brazilian economy fare from all the money generated by the soccer event? We'll have the answer after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's 24 after the hour. More than 100,000 residents of one of the poorest slums in Latin America faces a harsh reality of poverty poor sewage systems, poor schools, and poor hospitals. There are two destitutes that even travel to protest, and they, say, and they say they are not likely to see any of the money generated by the World Cup. Here's a report. Life in Jacarezinho has changed little. Second half hour of sunrise. Find out what happened to the happiest place in St. Cloud. But first, here's a look at what's coming up on Money Talks News. Studios. This is News 11 Sunrise, your number one source for news in the desert southwest. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Sunrise. We have a new face on KYMA, if you guys have not noticed just yet. <laughs> Joey Norton has the morning off, and Madeline Hunt will now be on KSWT at the 4 p.m. show. So I am joined today with our newest team member. This is Molly Lang. Nice to meet you all in Yuma. <laughs> yeah, so tell us a little bit about where you're from. Originally, I grew up in Portland, Oregon, uh, went to ASU to study journalism, and I just graduated like two weeks ago. So it's my first job, and right. I couldn't be more thrilled. Good. So we know you haven't been in Yuma uh, that long, but is, what do you like about it so far? I do like that small town feel. I feel safe here, and um, I think I already know my way around the city. <laughs> All right, well, Molly will be here. Um, 
for a while. So we'll go ahead and just welcome Molly. You guys can send her emails, Facebook posts, just tell her hi. Yeah, hi. follow me on Twitter at Molly Lang News. All right. And I'll have you go ahead. And oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> New attacks on Baghdad have Washington lawmakers weighing their options. The fear is if this enemy isn't stopped, the U.S. could be their next target. Tracy Potts is following developments from Washington this morning. <laughs> well, madam, we need air power immediately to stop. The continue to keep a close eye for any hot spots at a school in St. Cloud, Minnesota, after fire destroyed the historic school early Sunday morning. Dave Bergeron has re the report. What some people call a happiest place in St. Cloud. Those happy moments are now memories. We're sad as a family to see Roosevelt like this. Jill Pauley's five-year-old daughter, Sophia, knew the Roosevelt Education Center well. She had spent four years here attending preschool. Great GM cars with faulty ignitions, Toyotas with faulty airbags. Two recalls have been made this year. But car recalls may be more common than you think, and they may be affecting your family's safety. Money expert Stacy Johnson is here with what you need to know about recalls. Headlines, car recalls. Some, like the... For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. The United States competes in World Cup soccer today. Go USA. <laughs> Fans of all nations are fired up for the global event, and that's helping a small company in Seattle. They sell team scarves for every country in the competition, and business is booming. Chris Daniels reports. The United States is gearing up to play Ghana today. A San Francisco man has a Father's Day gift for his son after making an amazing catch on Sunday. He hopes the ball becomes a treasured memory, even though it's not the one he caught. Reporter Sergio Quintana spoke to him after the game. You have to have some really good balance in order to catch, have a baby in one hand right? and catch a ball with the other hand. Yeah, that's brave. I would be like protecting my baby. I'd be like, can you hold this really fast? And then <laughs> leaping out over to like grab the ball. I always need like two hands. <laughs> Just pass the baby to the person sitting next yeah. to you. Hold him real quick. Let me get that. <laughs> yeah, I caught it. <laughs> All right, well, still ahead on Sunrise, we have a tragic death to report in Hollywood. Casey Kasem has passed away. But first, here's what's coming up on today. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you. Hope you had a good weekend. Straight ahead on the show this morning, we've got some breaking news. Militants capturing yet another town in Iraq. While the U.S. prepares to evacuate some workers from the embassy in Baghdad and send Marines to beef up security for the remaining workers, we're going to be live with the latest. Also ahead. The good morning. It's 45 after the hour. For generations of radio listeners, his name and his voice were synonymous with top 40 music. Casey Kasem died today at the age of 82. Mark Barger has a look back on his career behind the microphone. Hello again and welcome to American Top 40. His weekend radio show was a habit for millions of listeners coast to coast in the 70s and 80s. I'm Casey Kasem. These are the most popular songs in the USA. And that voice was unmistakable. The highest debuting record of the week. As much as any musician's instrument, Casey Kasem's voice was his. I mean, it's almost like a, a fine uh, Etzak Perlman playing the uh, Stradivarius. I mean, mm -hmm. you really have to be finely tuned. Welcome in the days American before the Internet, Kasem's American Top 40 countdown mixed the hottest songs with trivia and stories about the artist on as many as 900 stations worldwide. We don't stop till we get to the top. Anyone who has worked hard enough to have a Top 40 record deserves all the accolades that I can give them. Kasem earned his own share of honors, including induction into the Radio Hall of Fame at the age of 60, the youngest inductee ever. His voice was also much in demand for commercials. On Continental, one round-trip ticket to Australia buys you a vacation full of stopovers. And Kasem carved a pop culture niche in cartoons. I'll remember this Halloween the rest of my life, if I have a rest of my life. The voice of Scooby-Doo's buddy Shaggy was the most famous of Kasem's many animated acting roles. Holy paranoia, Batman. Out of the spotlight since 2009 and suffering from a form of dementia, Kasem became the center of a bitter legal battle over the past year. Children from Kasem's first marriage were at odds with his second wife, Jean, over visitation, control of his medical care, and his wealth. The dispute was an ugly postscript to the life of a man whose legendary voice rendered one of radio's most memorable sign-offs. Keep your feet in the ground, but keep reaching for the stars. Mark Barker, NBC News. 
Kasem also had bit acting roles in films and several TV shows, including Hawaii Five-0 and Quincy. He once said that he would never really consider himself a star until people knew him as Casey Kasem, the actor. Kelly Clarkson has some good news to share on Twitter. Ryan Seacrest reminds Case, remembers Casey Kasem. And then let's see which movies dominated at the weekend box office. Mary Mueller has these stories in today's Hollywood Minute. Congratulations, Kelly Clarkson. She tweeted Saturday that she and husband Brandon Blackstone had a baby girl. The singer says her daughter's name is River Rose. The couple married in 2013. Ryan Seacrest is speaking out about the passing of radio DJ Casey Kasem. He says in a statement, when I was a kid, I would listen to Casey Kasem's AT40 show every weekend and dream about someday becoming a radio DJ. Kasem hosted American Top 40 for 24 years. Seacrest took over the reins to the nationally syndicated show in 2004. Kasem died Sunday at the age of 82. Now for a roundup at the box office. 22 Jump Street drove past the competition, earning 60 million. What's up, dog? We're back. In second, the animated movie How to Train Your Dragon 2. Every dragon has its secrets. It raked in 50 million. And in third, Maleficent bringing in 19 million. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Mary Muller. That's your Sunrise Entertainment. We'll be right back after the break. All right, happy birthday to John Cho. He starred in um, Harold and Kumar, Go to White Castle, also in American Pie, and he played, he played Sulu in Star Trek. He's 42 years old today. Happy birthday, John. And for those not in, too impressed with the soccer tournament going on right now in Brazil, Japan may have what you're looking for. Tokyo hosted the All Japan Bubble Soccer Finals yesterday to determine who would be crowned the Bubble King, originally created in Norway. The object of this game is the same as ordinary soccer. You just have to wear a giant inflatable suit as you play. I would like to do that. <laughs> it's near impossible to touch the ball with your hands, making the goalie's job that much harder, and you can't go for a steal without knocking over your opponent. The winning team, who received nearly $70,000, said they were already ready to defend their Bubble King title in next year's competition. You know what that reminds me of? There used to be a show when I was little. It was called American Gladiators. Yep. And they used to get in those. It was not the plastic bubble, but it was like a metal thing. Mm -hmm. You had to run around in that. And I always wanted to do that. So It kind of reminds me of that show Wipeout, too. Yeah, Wipeout does it, too. Yeah. So maybe we should go to Tokyo and get in this <laughs> bubble competition yep. next year. Yep, KYMA. <laughs> KYMA. That would be good if we all did it as mm -hmm. a team, like mm -hmm. morning show against the night show. Yep. We, we'll, we might have to do that, and we'll bring you that uh, competition next time, right? <laughs> Sounds good. So um, I'm just going to give you just a few seconds. Tell everybody one more time, uh, you're here replacing yes. Madeline. She's going over to KSWT. Again, this is Molly mm -hmm. Lang, and we'll see more from her in the future. Yes. All right. Thank see you. See you guys later. <laughs>